Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Hosanna in the highest. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, Reply, the master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and strewed them on the road. The crowds preceded him, and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus, the prophet, from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. 
My dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who claim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. You are the King of Israel and David's royal son. Now in the Lord's name coming, our King and Blessed One. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The company of angels are praising you on high, and mortals joined with all things created make reply. All glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The people of the Hebrews with palms before you went. Our praise and prayers and anthems before you we present. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sponsorial song, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my, my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help. Hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. 
In the midst of the assembly I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Our second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ According to Matthew One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on my behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night, all of you will have your faith in me shaken. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith shaken in you, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced, a little, uh, he advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, 
My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again, My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi, and he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this moment with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? And they said in reply, He deserves to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, you too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again he denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that he began to curse and to swear, I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, 
all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said it is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet, and they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor who questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished, and at that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message, Have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? And they all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak around him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him, took the reed, and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped off the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to be crucified. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests and the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself, so he is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will all believe in him. He trusted in God, 
Let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate, and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this impostor, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders, then, that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him, and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, keep the uh, homily as short as I can. Um, first of all, um, same message as before. I miss you guys very, very much. Um, it is uh, odd celebrating these sacred festivities uh, without you physically being here, uh, but I do know uh, that you guys are participating the best way you can uh, from home, uh, watching these, these liturgies take place, praying in community. Um, it is interesting, um, and I mentioned this yesterday at the, the Daily Mass, uh, many of you have reached out uh, with concern uh, for me, which I greatly appreciate, uh, being at home uh, by myself. I think many of you think... Um, or worried that I'm, I'm uh, experiencing loneliness or boredom or whatever, maybe, trust me, doing fine. Uh, plenty to read, plenty to watch, uh, keeping in touch with my family. Uh, everything's going very, very well, but I appreciate the concern and the prayers. Uh, it is interesting, though, being at your house all the time, right? Like being quarantined and stuck home, uh, you, you begin to kind of look around at, at what, what are some things I can do? You know, what can I clean up? What can I straighten up? What can I kind of maybe change in the house? Because that's all you got. That's the only thing at your disposal. Uh, so it's been interesting uh, looking around at, at my house and I've come to realize I just have a ton of stuff. Like it's just kind of stupid over the past four years how much I've accumulated in that little house over there. 
And so I was kind of organizing and kind of packing things up and kind of shifting things around. And, and I found a few things that I, I just came across that, that each have kind of a story behind them. It's kind of interesting how that works. These possessions, these things you have mean something. So I got, I'm going to have to go off camera here. I'll be right back. So one of the things that I, I got around is, is uh, this awesome blanket. It's a Colts blanket uh, that I keep on my couch. Uh, big fan of the Colts. This was made by my Aunt Kathy Westrick. Uh, so shout out to her if she's watching. Uh, awesome blanket, nice and warm. Great for when you're quarantined in your house and you just need to take a nap on the couch. Love this thing very much. Uh, it's got a story behind it. And then just other random stuff. So I mean, you got the stuff hanging up on your walls. I've got all these different like paintings and stuff. Uh, this is one from the movie The Quiet Man, my favorite movie of all time. Uh, it was uh, given to me by uh, a parishioner. Uh, so very much love this. Got John Wayne in that. Speaking of John Wayne, uh, someone had gifted me a statue <laughs> of John Wayne, uh, which is awesome. So that's up in the house. I've got my uh, calendar from Tolkien. So you know I'm a Tolkien fan at the house. Uh, I've got my uh, Star Wars mug, you know, Stormtrooper, pretty awesome. And this just goes on and on and on. Obviously, couldn't bring everything over, but tons of stuff over there. All has stories related to it. All has memories and things associated with it. Now, I know you're sitting at home thinking, Father Dan has finally lost it. Why is he bringing all these random items from his house over for the homily? Well, it's for this reason. The physical matters. The physical matters, and especially for us as Catholics. And so there's something very interesting about celebrating these sacraments, these masses, without you physically being here. We as Catholics, every sacrament we have, everything that we practice has a physicality to it. Whether it is communion, receiving the Eucharist, our Lord Jesus Christ physically into ourselves, whether it's going to confession, which I can't, I can't do over the phone, I can't do over Skype, it has to be this personal connection. We're physical people in our faith. And so for you watching at home, I, I, I have a suggestion and, and a, a recommendation. Uh, someone had forwarded me an article about this. And I think it's very, very appropriate. You are right now sitting at home and trying to participate in these masses, which I think is awesome and highly commendable. What I'm afraid of, though, is that you're watching these masses, that you are sitting on your couch watching this on your television and, and almost as if it were a movie or a television show when it's so much more than that. So what I'm asking, and, and for the rest of this Mass, I would ask that you do this, and if you are uh, not watching this live, if you're going to be watching this later tonight or uh, tomorrow on Sunday, if you're that, you have my permission right now to pause the video and to go around your house and collect things that remind you of Mass, whether it be candles, or little statuettes. So I've got, I've got some things I want to bring over. Uh, so just some ideas to put around your TV to make it feel more like Max, because we are a physical people. So I got another box. If you've got palms from last year or the years before, get them out. Bring them by your TV. It is Palm Sunday, by the way. If you have a Bible at home, get it out. Put it by your TV. This is the Mass. We read from sacred scripture. If you don't have awesome paintings or things on the wall that you can bring over, icons of the Holy Family or whatever to bring by, have your kids make something for you. It's so awesome that they can make something. You can have this near it, uh, a cross, a scene from scripture. Have that near the TV. If you do have little statuettes that you can bring with you, like Our Lady or St. Joseph, those are awesome to bring. Have those by the TV. Try to make it as much like an altar as you possibly can. You got candles, whether they be, you know, your normal like wax candle like that, or even if it's something like from Walmart that you got. Like put them out, light them, make it feel like the mass. Holy water. If you got holy water, bring that out. Rosaries. Bring it out. Put it by there. If you've got anything that reminds you of God, little crosses, crucifixes, whatever it be, join us for mass. Join us for the solemn celebration by participating from home. Now, it goes beyond this. So again, pause if you need to. Go around the house. Collect these things. Bring them by. Set up your little altar there in front of the TV so that this feels like the Mass. Physically feels like the Mass. Then, when that is done, and for the rest of this Mass and beyond, I want you to participate as if you were here. Meaning, if we're usually standing at this moment of the Mass, you'd be standing at home. If you're sitting, which is fine right now, we're doing the homily, you're fine sitting right now, uh, that's perfectly fine. If we're kneeling during this part of the Mass, when, when we get to the consecration, 
I would ask that you try uh, as best you can, depending on uh, your, your physical uh, condition and limitations, to try to kneel during those parts as well to take advantage of that. In essence, we celebrate Palm Sunday because there was a triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Christ himself rode on a donkey into the great city, and the people, in their need for physical reality, grabbed the only thing that was available to them nearby so that they could strew them on the road and make a path for the new king of Israel. Shouldn't we do the same? When we're in our homes and we're quarantined, shouldn't we grab whatever we have at our disposal that gives glory to God? And use that now to acclaim his as our king, the king of our home. And I would say, even beyond this mass, have an altar in your house. Have a place of prayer. This is what we do as Catholics. It's what we've always done. Even in times like this, we use what God has given us, these great gifts, to remember him, to praise him to truly be his sons and daughters living in his house. Your homes are churches. In the early days of the church, that's what we did. We would celebrate Mass in people's homes. Well, we're doing it now, just digitally. So make your home into a church. Let us praise our God. Amen. <laughs>
For all who serve our church as bishops, pastors, counselors, and teachers, may they speak God's com comforting, healing word to all of God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of faith, may we deepen our relationship with Christ by recognizing his face in the faces of our brothers and sisters in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people around the world who struggle to provide enough food to meet their family's daily needs, that they may overcome the challenges of hunger and poverty, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all preparing for the Easter sacraments and First Holy Eucharist, may they drink fully from the waters of life in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve on active duty in the military and their families who await their safe return, we pray to the Lord. For all the sick, the suffering, and their caregivers, especially Linda Alange, Rhett Dedimore, Debbie Eaglin, Eileen Ellingsworth, Rosemary Fries, Father John Hollowell, Irene Kaiser, Jack McGill, Janice Morris, Alan Ellinger, Mary Grace Parker, Margaret Boyer, Bill Condon, Rita Neal, and Leah Long. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those who have died, or who will die this day, in a special way we remember Mary Jane Crawford, Robert Long, John E. Etling, Michael Fowler, and Larry Frakes. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the needs and intentions we hold silently in our own hearts, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God of eternal glory, you anointed Jesus, your servant, to bear our sins, to encourage the weary, to raise up and restore the fallen. Keep before our eyes the splendor of the paschal mystery of Christ, and by our sharing in the passion and resurrection, seal our lives with the victorious sign of his obedience and exaltation. We ask this through Christ, our liberator from sin, who lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. stand. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, it by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenants, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and his resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope, Charles our Bishop, Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until that hour when we stand before you 
saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our own deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption, and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Those of you watching at home, we will pray the uh, act of spiritual communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a few brief announcements uh, before we conclude. Um, first of all, um, just a reminder that even though we have blessed the palms, uh, we will not be able to distribute them until after all this has passed. Um, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we will hang on to uh, all the palms um, until a later date, and then we will get those out to you guys. Um, I also want to go over the Holy Week schedule uh, with all of you. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so um, next Thursday will be our first day for Holy Week uh, with Holy Thursday, uh, and that will be a 7 o'clock live Mass um, taking place that evening, uh, same channel on YouTube as we have been doing. Um, on Friday then, we will have our Holy Friday or Good Friday uh, service at 6 o'clock on that day, streaming live. Uh, on Holy Saturday, uh, for the Easter Vigil Mass, we have to wait till the sun goes down, uh, so it'll be at 9 o'clock, uh, uh, 9 p.m. when we do that Mass uh, uh, streaming live. And then on Easter Sunday itself, uh, we will have Mass streaming live at 11 o'clock that morning. Uh, so again, Holy Thursday at 7, Good Friday at 6, uh, Easter Vigil at 9, and Easter Sunday at 11. Different times every day, we're keeping you on your toes. Uh, that has been sent out in one of those documents that uh, we sent out via email, um, but we will make sure that that's up on the website as well uh, so that you have access to that. It's already on there? Perfect, it's already on the website. Um, so if you need to check that out, uh, you can do that there. Um, we were supposed to, last weekend, have the Bread for the World campaign uh, take place at church. Obviously, that did not happen. Uh, and so what we've been asked to do is to pass on to you uh, the website that you can go on to uh, if you would like to take part in Bread for the World, trying to end uh, world hunger, um, especially by petitioning our politicians, those in government, to pass bills and laws that help to uh, promote uh, generous aid, uh, especially to other nations. Uh, you can go to simply bread.org. That's all it is, bread.org. Uh, and you get on there and it gives you all the information of things that you can do even now uh, to help end world hunger. So I wanted to make that announcement as well. Uh, another thing I wanted to touch on briefly is many of you have been uh, emailing or texting me uh, because of the um, staying at home policy and uh, one day kind of ro rolling right into the next one and you kind of lose track of days. Uh, many of you have texted and emailed and said that you have eaten meat on Fridays completely by accident, uh, just kind of losing track of time and it just happens. Uh, and you've been asking, you know, is that a sin? And if it is, how do I go to confession? Because we can't go to confession right now. So I'm here to tell you that A, if it was truly unintentional, so you just lost track of days and it happens, I get it, especially in today's world, not a problem. Uh, it's not a sin. Uh, you did not do it on purpose. Uh, so no need uh, to, to worry about that. If it was intentional or if it was like, you know what, like I already had bacon this morning for breakfast, so I'm just going to you know, continue eating meat the rest of the day, um, then um, I, we would say that it's, it's the same as any other sin, right? So it would be, it'd be the same as if uh, you had done something else and you need to go to confession. We would say right now, try to make a, a perfect act of contrition. Uh, so appeal to God directly uh, and, and uh, say to him how sorry you are for what you've done and that you want to make repentance for it and that your desire is that the next opportunity to go to confession uh, that you'll take advantage of that. So uh, again, it's not, it's not uh, distancing ourselves from the sacraments as much as it is just waiting for that opportunity to present itself. So uh, that's kind of uh, what's available right now as far as going to confession. Uh, unless you're in danger of death, then, then we can come and, and uh, hear your confession. Um, I think that's it for our announcements at this time. Again, just stay tuned on email and our app. Uh, we'll try to keep you up to date with things as they come along uh, to us, um, but that's where we're at right now. Uh, let us um, conclude Mass with the St. Michael the Archangel prayer that we say together. Let us pray that as we say, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look, we pray, O Lord, on this your family, 
for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. We will conclude with a, a hymn. Uh, if you know this one, please feel free to sing along. O sacred head surrounded by crown of piercing thorn, O bleeding head so wounded, reviled and put to scorn, the power of death comes o'er you, the Good shit.